going um, Route 390 across to 1786. So um, I've got a short video to kind of tell you when we did a rebrand a couple years ago, this was kind of the story that we came up with. And I do apologize, it will not go full screen. I tried everything that I could think of, but I think this will play and still be entertaining. All right, Judy, we're not getting any audio. You're not, okay. Um... Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Well, I'm and gonna... it's, it's typically when you open up the screen share, there's a box in the lower left-hand corner that says share audio. Okay. So maybe if you close out a screen share and go back in. Sure, I will. All right, stop share. Yeah, and when you go back into screen share, before you actually share, you'll see a box. Oh. All right, let's start over then. <laughs> A trip to Binghamton is like a trip back in time. Right off the highway, in just a very short distance, it takes you into the to the heart of downtown Binghamton, where there's just incredible architecture. It's a very accessible, beautiful place to visit. There's so much to do. There's music, there's theater, there's dance. It's all walking distance. You know, you can walk from a hotel to a restaurant, to a restaurant, to a restaurant. We have beautiful summers. Uh, beautiful scenery around Binghamton. And I defy anybody, no matter what your interest is, we have it here. I'm Richard Saracero from Oak Sen. I'm Naima Krajan with Goodwill Theater. I am Mark Yanati from MB Yanati Development. I'm Daniel Sharp from The Garage. I'm Heidi Weeks, owner of Mabel Dior Fashion Boutique. I'm John Brunelli, director of Anthony Brunelli Fine Arts. And we invite you to, to be part of our story. So um, kind of talking, following up on that, when we did rebrand, be part of our story was our tagline. And so we wanted to get some really great members of our community to be a part of this. And we've actually done a series of videos for different businesses. And we tried to pick businesses that were unique and different. Uh, Richard Saracero owns the Oaks Inn, which is one of the oldest Italian restaurants uh, in the area. They don't have online reservations. They don't have an email you have to call to make a reservation. They've got people that have standing reservations every Friday night at eight for a table. But it's a very unique restaurant and it's in a, a section of our um, in Endica area that is called Little Italy. So there's a lot of little Italian restaurants and ices and things like that over in that area. And it makes it really special. So earlier when I was kind of giving the overview, I did talk a little bit about our history and what makes us so special. And we really were the uh, ground that a lot of invention was taking place back in the day. Um, there were people that were visionaries and they saw things like IBM and um, the length flight simulation. So they were originators in their fields at the time. And what we're finding now is that we have a new set of visionaries. We've got college students that are going through our incubator programs and starting really creative businesses in the area, some in the hospitality industry, some in other industries like hemp, a definitely up and coming industry for the country. So it's really interesting to see that happen. And I know I did talk up briefly that we are the carousel capital of, of the world, but talking about Endicott Johnson Shoe Factory, um, when they were here in our community, they really took care of their employees. Their motto was home of the square deal. They did the carousels, they built parks, they built them homes to live in, they built hospitals. They were long before it was cool, they realized the quality of work-life balance and they realized that happy and healthy employees were more productive employees. So they were definitely at the forefront of that type of thinking. And they a lot of their uh, facilities that they built still stand today. And then we do have, you know, if you're looking for the history connection, Roberson Museum and Science Center has a great digital planetarium, but they do also have flight simulation information in there and some great art displays. If you look in the bottom of this slide, there is a picture and that's called nature's best photography. And that is a display that was Smithsonian holds a contest every year. And normally that display is only held at the Smithsonian um, 
And then for the past five years, we actually did have the exhibit in Binghamton. So they've got some permanent uh, pictures that they can use in the future as well. And then everybody is, you know, food, food, food. We are really blessed that we have so many great restaurants, especially locally owned restaurants. I always say that it's really interesting to me that when I'm walking in downtown Binghamton, there isn't any chain restaurants. There is one, there is one tiny little subway, but everything else, every coffee house, every bakery, every restaurant is a locally owned restaurant that is unique to our area. That is someone who either grew up in this area, moved to this area, and they're bringing that food to us. We have everything from a taco garage to the lost dog, to Italian, anything you're looking for to eat, you can find here. And they do some great events. You know, everyone talks about restaurant weeks. Well, our spring restaurant week was canceled. So what they're doing for the fall restaurant week um, from our restaurants in the downtown Binghamton area is they're doing takeout. So they're encouraging people to still get the food, still get that three for price, three for 20 bucks, three for $25, where you're getting an appetizer, an entree and a dessert but you're taking it to go. So you can eat it in the safety of your home. And with the COVID restrictions being lifted a little bit, many of them do offer um, takeout alcohol to go along with that. So you can have a complete dinner when you get home. And then they do a really fun event normally called Martini Walk, where each restaurant comes up with a signature martini and you buy a ticket and you go through and you sample the different martinis and vote for the winner at the end. And speaking of drinking and martinis, we are also very fortunate to be a part of Brew Central, which is a central New York initiative for the craft beverage industry. We have five craft breweries in the area, and we do also have a distillery. And we are part of an overall trail that goes through 10 counties where there are wineries, cideries, as, along with breweries and distilleries. So what is it that makes us unique? And here are just a few of the things. Um, as I mentioned, carousel capital of the world, the fact that we have six antique carousels all in working order, all available for free for the public to ride is really quite amazing. And then to keep with this New York State travel theme, all of our carousels were built in the Herschel Carousel Factory in North Tonawanda outside of Buffalo. Rod Sterling, the creator of the Twilight Zone, grew up in Binghamton, and in a lot of his works, he puts a nod either to the community or to his drama teacher or anything else that he felt strongly about in this community. He ended up settling. He lived in L.A., but he also lived in the Ithaca area, but he came back to Binghamton every summer to get back together with friends, to drive by his hometown, and to go by his house and just check it out again. The flight training simulation blue box is really quite a work of art. And as I mentioned, there is a working one at TechWorks, one of our museums, where you can actually climb into the blue box and, and it is a flight simulator as if you are really landing a plane. And it's a lot of fun to do. It's definitely harder than it looks. Maybe gamers would be good at it because it's a lot of hand-eye coordination, but it's really fun. Anytime you can do something and actually go inside and try it and step inside, I think it's a great thing. The Luma Projection Arts Festival, there were a couple of snippets of that in the video that I started in the beginning to show you how our buildings actually transform with projection art cast on the building. So it loses the shape and it becomes a storybook. And it's really an amazing festival. It's normally held early September. They did do a virtual project this year where they created an opera that was specially written and designed and it was like an avatar kind of opera that was done uniquely for LUMA and that did broadcast this year during the LUMA dates for the event. And then as we mentioned, we do have our speedies. That is something that we're known for in the food industry because it is a specialty. Like Buffalo has its wings, we do have our speedies. And if you're ever in town for more than five minutes, I think there's a rule that you have to have at least one speedy. Talking about the attractions that we have in our area, we are a really family friendly destination. And I started to talk earlier about Animal Adventure Park and they went viral a few years ago when April the giraffe was giving birth to Tajiri. Uh, he went live on YouTube, people were tuned in to watch this giraffe give birth. It was incredible. And he really spawned a very loyal following. So now in normal years, when people can travel from anywhere across the country, or the world, we have a group of, of 
their followers that come to our community every summer. And it's anytime you go through the parking lot, you're gonna see a car from Ohio, Washington State, Texas, all over the country. They come because they've connected with this giraffe and with the other animals in the park. One of the other really nice things about the park is that it is completely accessible. Uh, people of any ability can make it through the park. They have quiet zones for people with autism that are on the spectrum and just kind of need that unplugging time. They're very sensitive to that, so it can be a great experience for everyone. You can get up close and interact with the animals. You can feed almost every animal in the park. And along the way, you're supporting conservation efforts and learning about conservation of the animals. Our Roberson Museum and Science Center, I mentioned earlier, it is our largest premier museum. It is open year round. They are doing tours like most other places on a timed event so that you are safe and enjoying your experience and you can actually walk around the whole museum and still be socially distanced and enjoy and discover everything that they have to offer. The Phelps Mansion Museum is an 1812 museum mansion that was turned into a museum and they are also doing the same thing with timed guided tours for guests. At the Bundy Museum of History and Art, there's two things that are really quite unique in that facility. One is the Bundy time clock um, it, the display that they have. IBM, when it started out, it was originally a time clock company and it was the Bundy time clock company that became IBM. So some of those original time clocks are on display at the Bundy. They also have a very large Rod Serling display where there are some artifacts and mementos from both the Twilight Zone and also some of Rod's other works. Chuckster's Family Fun Park is an amazing place for families to go. They have a zip line, they have mini golf. They have the longest hole for mini golf in the country. They have rock climbing wall. They have all sorts of activities, very family fun centered. And you can buy a day pass and come for a while, go home for a while, come back and still enjoy everything they have to offer. And last year, their most recent addition to the park was adding laser tag. I did also mention our craft beverage and our locally owned restaurants, but I think it's important to say that, you know, we were our restaurants take the safety of their patrons very carefully, very seriously, but they are also very uh, in tune with doing locally sourced. So they try to buy local produce, local meat, and things like that whenever possible. Nothing has taken front center stage through COVID than outdoor adventure. It's a great way to still explore a community, to get outside and enjoy yourself and be socially distanced, but still enjoy nature. This is just a small sampling of the things that we do have. Waterfalls in some of our parks are quite breathtaking. And there's a little bit of our fall foliage that you're seeing in that photo. As others have mentioned, this year was incredible. It wasn't supposed to be. We had a drier summer than usual, but yet the trees were ablaze with color and it was a great, great season for foliage. But we have a new outlook overlooking one of our rivers. Again, we're very in tune with our rivers. We've got kayak tours. We've got uh, canoe rentals that you can do. A uh, lot of outdoor camping and cross country skiing. So no matter the season that you're here, there is something to do. Our county actually through uh, their county planning created a website called Go All Out Broom. It's a great website because it has a list of different outdoor uh, things to do and where you can find them. It gives you directions how to get there. For the hiking trails, it tells you their difficulty so that if you're a novice, you're not gonna wanna do one of the more difficult trails and this can help you have the adventure that suits you. And they do also talk about other things that there are to do in the area like birding. I had no idea we had birding, but we have birding. And if you go to Go All Out Broom, you'll see where we have it. Arts and culture is something that is a part of our core. I talked about Endicott Johnson building parks and carousels. One of the things that they also built was a theater. And we used to have live theater coming through the area from New York City, from other communities, and they would play in our community. And that culture has continued. We have great performing arts. We have great visual arts. And then as you see on one of the, the bottom left-hand picture, we have some outdoor art, which is really exciting. We've got some beautiful mosaics throughout the county. And if you go on our website, visitbinghamton.org, we actually have a mosaics tour. 
We've got a couple of other tours that you can do self-guided. You kind of can hear the information about the tour when you're standing in front of the site. It will tell you why that's significant to the tour that you have. And then again, we do have a world-class opera company right here in Binghamton. I mentioned earlier that we did a, a lot of our, our stories, we did videos to support being part of our story. And this is another video that I wanted to share with everybody. The neat thing about our community, there are festivals and fairs and cultural events literally going on every weekend. So no matter when you visit, there's something to do. You just have to scratch underneath the surface to find it and see why we all love Binghamton. The difference in a place like Binghamton um, that has grown, that has, has made big progress, is you go out on a Tuesday night and, and there is life. And there's that sense of there's so much to do that now the destination is no longer the individual restaurant, the individual bar, but it is the vibe of downtown. I see Binghamton as that next type of, of, of movement. When you live somewhere for a long time and you've seen the downtimes and then you start to see things grow back up and be strong and be proud, I see the progress that we're making every day, and I just want to share it with the world. I'm Tice Lerner, co-founder of Luma. I'm Jordan Patch, owner of Animal Adventure Park. My name is Joshua Bernard. I'm the co-founder of Luma. I'm Judy Hatz, director of Visit Binghamton. And I invite you to be part of our story. And I invite you to be part of our story. I did also briefly mention earlier that we are part of the central New York tourism region. So that goes from up in the Utica area through Madison County, right on down through Shenango County, over into Cooperstown and into Binghamton. It's kind of an odd shaped little, little uh, cluster of, of uh, counties. But what we have decided and what we've been doing, our regional programming is thematic. It's from an experience. Brew Central, we're one of the first areas in the country to have been the number one area to grow hops. That was in the New York State area, and that is starting to grow. So we took that little piece of history, and then we just promote all of the great little craft beverage partners that we have along the way. Outdoor Adventure, the timing for us launching this last year couldn't have been more perfect. From snowmobiling to golf to fishing, there really is something for everyone. And then CNY Fresh is agritourism and enjoying the fresh flavors that we have to offer in our restaurants, in our farmers markets, and even on the farm stands directly. And these are just a few more of my more beautiful pictures of my area and why I do love it here. And uh, we definitely would love to welcome you guys to come and write your own story here. Okay, Judy, that's just terrific. Then we're gonna uh, uh, get Laura back here yeah, and Kelly. I'm here. And look at the questions. Um, yeah, it's it's great to hear these stories about what's what's all around us. Um, it really is. It's exciting. Um, I've driven through Binghamton too many times without stopping. I can assure you that's going to change the next time I'm uh, I'm driving south uh, for sure. Um, so uh, let's see, uh, Laura. Do you have any questions in the chat uh, that we want to yes. throw out to Judy? Yeah, um, we, yes, we do. Um, one of them is somebody is asking, you mentioned cross country skiing. Do you have any, or in the out the area, because you cover a large vicinity, any downhill skiing? We do. Um, the closest downhill skiing to us is Greek Peak, which is okay. in Portland County, and they neighbor us just slightly to the north. They do have the downhill skiing, and they do also have the indoor water park. So it's a great place for people to come and experience that as well. Oh, that's fantastic. So they could kind of get the both. So those who want to be out in the cold and those who want to be in the warm water park, I'm exactly. liking that. Liking that. Exactly. Um, speaking about water parks, swimming um, and pools and things like that. I know you have the river there. Uh, is that swimmable or is that something that you're going to pretty much, if you want to swim, we're going to head to the pools? <laughs> you know, we have in our parks, we have some really great lakes and they're probably a little bit more just simply for like access to them that they're safer. I think you can swim in our river. So if you're like me and you're kayaking and you fall out, you're going to be fine. Um, but yeah, we have some beautiful lakes and then we do have um, several hotels that have indoor pools in addition to in the summertime, several that have outdoor as well. So um, it's some of our county parks like Dorchester Lake 
is incredible and they have wonderful beaches and then a couple of our state parks have beaches and, and lake access and normally speaking of kind of both seasons um we normally have a pond hockey tournament that takes place oh. at Shenango Valley State Park um with COVID it is not going to take place in January of 21 but I really invite people to come back in January of 22 it's really interesting they actually build like a fake pond because you can't count on the water being frozen um but it's really beautiful and the park is just a really great backdrop for it wow now with that being said what would you say is the I know you're going to tell me the answer is going to be all year round but seasonally. Um, I know that and people in Rochester have heard there have uh, been some times when the rains come and there's been some problems with the river. Um, but I know that you guys have, have rebuilt and re, re I guess, uh, re-emerged, I should say, yeah. with uh, great gusto. How is uh, How are things and seasonally, when would you say, do you think summer is the best time or what do you want? <laughs> People can travel year round. Um, I'm a summer girl. And I think part of what makes our summers so special is we have all of the indoor activities. So if you hit that rainy day, you can go indoor to Roberson or something like that. But uh, being able to go to Animal Adventure Park or the Binghamton Zoo or the Discovery Center, they have this wonderful little story garden outside for children. Um, it's a really great thing to do in the summer. And then our carousels are normally open Memorial Day through Labor Day. So they just make it extra special to come and see. One of the things I almost forgot to mention was in one of our parks, Recreation Park, where Rod um, Serling based an episode on, they built a part of the park which is called Our Space. And it's a fully accessible park. So even someone in a wheelchair can get on a swing. And oh, it's, cool. just, it's just incredible. And uh, so I kind of, I'm a summer girl. Fall is gorgeous, but I'm a summer girl. Yeah, that sounds great. And I, I'm just not going to pass it over to Kelly for another question, but I can tell you, I had no idea the Endicott, the, the link, because I have family that's from that area we go in Endicott. I had no idea that that was right, right down the road from us. I know, right? <laughs> Very good. Kelly, have you got a question there that came up? Yeah. Actually, I have two. I had, I had five, but she answered the other three questions while she was talking. So I told the people in the chat that she already answered them. But one person wanted to know, is the zoo open all year round? It is not. Um, our, the Ross Park Zoo closes in October. Animal Adventure Park, they do a Jungle Bells display where they put up holiday lights and things okay. like that. And they are open from November into December. So, but then they do close for a few months and he opens back up in May. Nice, very nice. And then the other question I had was about the cider mill. Are they still open? Because somebody did there once and they want to go back and they want to know if you're offering any Halloween activities for the children. I didn't hear the last part of that. If, if you have any Halloween activities at the cider mill for the children. Okay, um, the cider mill is open and they actually pivoted so well through this entire thing. You can make place your order online, do a drive through to pick up your donuts and cider, never having to get out of your car. You can walk into the cider mill and they do also have, at this time of year, they also have their farm market where they have fresh apples and mums and things like that. They are going great guns. Um, as far as Halloween, what we're doing, we've got two events. I don't think Spider Mill is doing anything per se for Halloween, but I know in one of our parts, Oxenango Park, there's going to be a drive through um, oh, trick or treat. Nice. So that, again, safety and things like that, but children can go to that. And then Animal Adventure is also doing something uh, this coming weekend for trick or treat. There's going to be daytime activities for the younger ones and nighttime activities for older children. And um, so they'll be distributing candy. It'll be a more of a walkthrough type of thing, but they'll be distributing candy safely. Mm. Wonderful. Uh, Craig, how about you? Do you have any other questions? Or yeah, Laura? I, ju I just got one on, on the carousels. Are these complete carousels that you ride and that are operational or are they just the horses and the figures? They're complete carousels. And most of them still have the original um, organ music that plays with them wow. as well. All of them have been redone. The last one to get redone was the one in Endicott, and they were working on that the end of this year, beginning of this year, um, end of last year, beginning of this year. I know. So, and, so how, anyways, how many of them are there? Um, we have the six all together, six carousels, and the horses have all been restored, and they're all in working order. The only one that may be offline next year would be the one near the zoo, and that's because they were going to relocate that on the zoo property, keep the carousel, keep it separate. So that's been a, a process that sort of got held up a little bit. But yeah, they're amazing to see. 
they're really works of art. They really truly are pieces of history that I'm glad to see are still there. Yes. That's wonderful. And we just it's had a viewer cool. just popped on saying they love carousels. They said definitely a must. So, they are. and you know, I hate to keep plugging us, but on our website, on the Bing stories, we actually did a story on the carousel and it's really kind of cool to hear the history of them. Oh, wow. Well, that Thank is you wonderful. very much. That's awesome. Yeah. And your speedies are great. I love your speedies. I've had them. Very good. <laughs> yes, I, I know about the speedies too. Uh, real tasty. So Judy, thank you so much for um, uh, spending uh, the better part of your day with us. We're delighted that you could join us. 